going on guys welcome back to network chuck man uh network engineers are super super important right now um i just got a, a notification earlier just right before the stream actually that uh youtube is going to be cracking down on bandwidth that they're going to be taking all hd uh, content on youtube for 30 days all over the entire world and they're going to bring it down to 480p that's standard definition that's like box television set back in the 19 forever it goes so uh Man, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, and that's exactly the point of this whole video is talking about how during this crisis where everyone's having to stay home and because the coronavirus is scary, it's real, and it's um, it's obviously having a huge impact on every one of our lives. Uh, but we would be a lot worse off. In fact, we would be totally crippled without you, network engineers. And real quick, let me know if anybody can hear me or everyone can hear me. Um, but yeah, hopefully this stream is in HD <laughs> for the time being. If you're watching this maybe a few days from now, um, they're cracking down. They're going to bring down the streams to 480p um, and not just streams, every video on YouTube. But coronavirus is, uh, again, causing everyone to work from home. Um, just this week in the U.S., we've had a ton of states, um, counties issuing you need to stay at home. Uh, those, what is it called? The uh, at home, I forget the official term on it, but they're basically saying don't leave your house or you'll be arrested kind of situation. Um, not martial law, but like stay at home kind of situation. So it's it's pretty crazy. Um, what does that mean though? What does that mean? I'm going to sip some coffee. And by the way, um, on tonight's stream, you're going to be joining me. So I have a Zoom call. Um, it should be in the description and I'll add it in the chat here real quick. Um, I'm going to admit some people to kind of give their story to talk about what your companies had to do to make this all happen because everyone is having to work from home now. That means VPN traffic is spiking like crazy. Not every one of the companies that we know of or work at are prepared to have their entire workforce go home and use their VPN. Some people may have, um, their, all of their internet traffic back, uh, back or what's the word, all of it going over the VPN tunnel, which is horrible. So people are uh, learning how to split tunnel, uh, but also their VPN devices aren't bulky enough. It's horrible. So where would we be without network engineers? We'd be nowhere. So let me add this to the backhaul. There's the word. It escaped me. Thank you, Neo Quicksock. Tick, tick. <laughs> backhaul. Backhauling is a cool feature. Inspect all the traffic. However, man, everyone backhauling, not a good situation. So I looked at the numbers before I um, hopped on the call, but uh, as of now, uh, we're seeing a 40% um, a forty percent raise in peak usage across the board. I think it's just US right now. Um, VPN, we're seeing a 30% spike, which, I mean, that's, that's expected. That's obvious. But we're actually seeing a huge uptick in online gaming, 75% uh, uptick in online gaming, and of course, streaming services. We got Netflix, got Amazon, which I believe those two guys um, already in the uh, in Europe, they are bringing their streaming to 480p quality. I expect the same thing in the US. So we're having a crazy amount of bandwidth going over our pipes because everyone's going home. They're not using their corporate infrastructure, their local land to connect and use things. They're all being at home. And when they should be working, they should be working. They are streaming more Netflix, streaming more things, no more going to concerts, no more hanging out at cafes and stuff. They're all at home using all this bandwidth. And network engineers are here to save the day. It's kind of crazy how important our jobs have become how important everyone in IT has become from, from a help desk person uh, to a network engineer, to a system admin, to a cloud engineer. All of you are completely, totally vital to this. Now, uh, I'm going to look at my Zoom call. Now, this is the first time I've done like a Zoom call situation. I'm just going to bring someone in and um, we'll see if it works. So uh, let's see. I'm going to bring in, um, let me go to my Hangout tab here. I'll bring in a guy named Grant. Grant. Can you hear me? Are you there? Grant? He's connecting right now. So while Grant's connecting, we'll, we'll go ahead and keep talking. I'll see how this works. This should be uh, kind of fun. <laughs> and it could be that the, uh, the internet's going to kill us. Grant, you there? If Grant doesn't connect soon, I will get someone else in here. Um, let's get Derek in here. Derek, can you hear me? Hey, Chuck. Derek, you there? Hey, I'm here. 
<laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks for joining. Um, so what, what do you do? I ask people to come on and say, hey, I work for Help Desk or I'm on the network team. What is it that you do to help us survive this time? So at this time, I am help the, my IT center to, to become as possible to work at home from home office. How, how, many, uh, how many people do you have uh, working from home at this point? I mean, I guess it's everyone, but how many people have, had, have you had to bring from the office to the house? Uh, what about 10? Seven hundred people. Wow, that's that's a lot. And and I'm not sure what your business model is, but normally, how many people do you have working from home? Um, I think it is more about. I don't know, maybe a lot of people. I don't know. I, I don't have in numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. So, what is it you had to? Um, how how has it impacted your job? Because obviously. You, I hope you're able to work from home. Um, how has your job changed? Are you like working all the time? Are you freaked out, stressed out? How is it for you right now? Uh, it's really, it's, I'm I'm working Hewlett Pack Enterprise, and it's been very difficult because uh, the the work have been more extressive, have a lot of pressure, a lot of customers that do not work at home need to take home. Yeah, I get that because like it's um, people are just used to going to the office. They, they know their routine. They know what to click. They know what to open. Working from home is a whole different situation. And for people who are very set in their ways, we take for granted that we are IT people and we love it. Um, yes. Man, people who don't don't do IT like we do, it's like a it's like walking on water for them. It's crazy. Um, so Derek, uh, thanks thanks for tuning in. I'm going to grab a few more people, but thanks for giving your perspective. All right, let's see. Uh, I'll bring in... And if, if you um, say in the chat, like, hey, come on in. I, I, I am checking the comments. It's just you guys are like flying through. It's crazy. I'll bring in um, Graham. Graham, come on in. I'm going to unmute you now as soon as your audio comes in. Actually, while uh, Graham's coming in, I'm going to unmute Grant. Okay. Grant, are you there? Grant. Hello? Hey, Grant. How's it going, man? Well, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Sorry to surprise you and bring you in like this. Um, no thanks worries. for joining us. Uh, can you tell me uh, what you do in IT and how you're helping all of us stay alive this time? Yeah, I'm actually an um, IT guy for a private Christian school. And Very cool. Yeah, thanks. And during this time, we uh, transferred all the kids digitally without an infrastructure in place. And the teachers are in their upper years. And the transition has been... <laughs> I can't been, imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's been difficult. But it's super great. And um, just answering calls, emails, texts, and team viewer and Chrome remote support has been a huge tool in my life. Really? So I, I've used that in the past, but not extensively. So that's what you guys mainly use to support is the Chrome remote, uh, Chrome remote tools. Yeah. Um, all the kids, well, fifth through 12 are using Chromebooks at our school. And so it's been a wide resource and team viewer. I ran into some issues on some kids, Chromebooks and teachers, Chromebooks of using team viewer. So it's been really good. Dude, that's awesome. Um, so do you feel stressed out? Do you feel hurried or crazy? Or have you guys pretty much nailed it down? You get everyone working from home and it's kind of smooth right now. Um, it's It's been a little bit of both. You know, there, there are times, and I think almost everyone can agree to this, that it's a roller coaster. You'll be super busy. Everyone's calling in at once. And then, you know, you maybe have like an hour to yourself or two hours to yourself and you kind of just fix things all at your own pace. Man, yeah, it's it's such a crazy time, and it's cool you're able to get this the school to work from home, the teachers to teach from home, which I know, yeah. man, some older teachers trying to teach them new stuff is oh, yeah. so stinking hard, um, especially right. when you can't be over their shoulder. And exactly, that's, that's so hard. <laughs> and sometimes, like you know, it's a physical hardware issue, and that you need oh. to like fix it for them. And you know, I can't say like, oh, I'll go run out and grab a part, or you know, I'll give you a spare at this moment. I can't, I, they just can't. And oh, trying to have man. them upload to YouTube and, you know, Zoom is a huge new tool for them. And a lot of them are just blown away by what we can do. 
That's that's amazing, dude. Um, well, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving your perspective. It's amazing what you're doing. So thank you for helping everyone stay up. And uh, um, yeah, keep watching. What we're gonna bring yeah. some other people in here. Thanks. All right, uh, we've got Doug Menendez. Um, I don't think I see any audio for you, Doug. Um, I have no audio, so I'm gonna leave you in timeout for a minute. I'm gonna bring in Keaton. Keaton. Can you hear me, Keaton? Hello. Hey, man. How's it going? Yeah. How are you doing? Doing well. I saw, I saw you in the chat saying you want to, hey, jump on. I'm like, ah, let me add him real quick. So uh, tell me what you do and how you're helping. Yeah. So I am an IT intern for my school district. Um, I'm actually a student full-time, too. Um mm. And what I'm doing is, is essentially I'm setting up um, like Zoom accounts, basically making Zoom University for my little school district. And uh, yeah, I'm also just uh, consulting with teachers, like older ones especially, who uh, don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> that seems to be the common trend right now. Um, which, you know, it's, yeah. it's cool because we, we do have to learn a bit of patience. And I, I know I have a grandmother who I can't go and see right now. And she's already texted me, hey, my iPad won't connect to the Wi-Fi. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to con figure out how to how to walk her through that. So that's that's frustrating. And I can't imagine it on a larger scale than what I'm experiencing, just one person. So man, kudos to you, you and your team for getting that going. So you said you're you're uh, yeah. you're actually a student at the school, but you're interning with the IT department. Oh, did I lose you? Oh, I think I lost him. Yeah, anyway, so oh, um, oh, there you are. Oh, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You there? Yeah, no, so I'm a I'm an IT intern after school. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, basically what I do is I just do like intro work, whatever like the supervisor doesn't have time to do. And it's technically a class, so I'm also just like learning whatever uh, is necessary. Oh, gotcha. That's cool, man. Well, hey, thanks for coming on um, and giving your insight and thanks for helping everyone stay up. Yeah. I'm gonna bring someone else on now. Take care, man. All right, I see Mr. Super Tal in the house. I'm gonna bring him on. And I see his video and his smiling face, so I'm gonna bring him on right now. Mr. Super Tal 3, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good, Chuck. So man, I mean, I already know a bit about you because um, we, we chat uh, on the Discord and everything, but tell everyone else uh, about yourself and why you're special. Well, so I graduated college a few months ago, February, actually. Bachelor's degree at 17, and right now I'm a Splunk engineer for the state of Alabama's Office of Information Technology. Now for, for a lot of people who have no idea what Splunk is, can you tell us what Splunk is? So Splunk is pretty much a log correlation um, tool. It allows you to take the logs in from everything, um, all your machines, your firewalls, Windows machines, and turn that into useful data for everybody. Which I'm curious now, because um, obviously you're gonna have all your data feeding into that, and you're able to see that, that um, what are you seeing now with uh, all the internet traffic spikes? Um, what are people looking for from you? Like, where, what reports are they asking you to pull? Um, so mostly right now they're looking on like failed logins for um, for certain agencies. They're wanting the failed logins to determine whether it's a Radius server or whether like a VPN failure. Mm. And then also we made a dashboard for um, VPN traffic to kind of monitor how many people were connected and stuff. So yeah. That's pretty cool. So are you um, are you stressed out? I mean, because it sounds like you're more on the, the Splunk side of things, so maybe you're not supporting on the front lines, but uh, have you had to see any of that? Um, I hadn't really done any support um, as far as stress. No, I've enjoyed working from home way, <laughs> so way better you're, than having to go to work. You're one of the lucky few, and you're able to just kind of sit behind the scenes and make the make the, the Wizard of Oz stuff work. But uh, yeah, dude, it's what, what you're doing is helping a lot. So thank you so much for um, gathering that data, because data is important. We have to know what's going on. We have to correlate and see, hey, why are we having issues? So Supertal, always great to see you, man. And um, I'll be talking to you soon. I'm going to bring someone else in now. All right, thanks. All right, man, see ya. All right, I got Doug Menendez, who I could not hear before. I want to bring him on now, unmuting now. Hey, Doug, how's it going, man? Pretty good. How are you doing today? Doing awesome. Um, sorry about the hiccup there. Uh, so tell good. me, tell me who you are and what you do. Um, Doug, working in LA. Uh, I work for an ISP uh, provider. We're talking like Cox, uh, Frontier, Spectrum, that type of thing. Oh wow. And I work for uh, yeah from uh, the customers' homes, just going home to home and doing installations and or 
troubleshooting their networks. I'm trying to like learn VPNs right now, like trying to cram it all as much as I can, trying to figure out how can I help. Well, that is so cool because I, I can't imagine all that the calls you're getting about VPN, you're, and you're trying to have to, to support other corporate VPNs that you know nothing about, but the, the your customers expecting you to know about it because they assume that you know everything about IT, right? <laughs> Of course, yeah. And <laughs> most of the time, it's just a Wi-Fi issue. But every here and there, I will like actually see it's a VPN stuff, and everything will be good from my side. And it's kind of hard. It's just saying, "Sorry, you're just gonna have to talk to your IT guy in your company because I can't. I, I don't know nothing." <laughs> well, and that's and that's frustrating. I've I've been on that side where you you want to learn it, you want to help, but there's there's just things you don't know, like. What's the procedure to connect? Is it certificate based? Uh, what's the, are they authenticating with Active Directory, Radius? What is it? So it's it's kind of frustrating, um, but you 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 kind of bring up a good point. I mean, learning security, learning about VPN um, is such a key thing to learn now oh, because yeah. obviously it's it's huge. We're seeing traffic spike like crazy. It's become a, a resource that's essential for everyone. So can you imagine the job request requisitions are going to come out? after all this is said and done. Even now, I have a, a poll, or not really a poll, a question on LinkedIn asking HR people, hey, are you guys hiring right now? With with what's going on, are you doing remote hiring? Are you doing onboarding for remote people? So I'm curious how it's all gonna change, but uh, dude, you're on the front, you're really, really on the front lines. So are you, are you working from home now, or are you still going and doing house calls? Ah, uh, still doing house calls. Um, I do like five a day, if anything, I just have to wear gloves and ask if anybody is sick at the home. Wow, so that's that's insane. So like, I, I'll watch the news and I see like firefighters who are suiting up and going to help people. You don't like have those resources. You're just having to walk in and like. And what's crazy, I and mean, what we're learning more about the coronavirus is that it's people can be asymptomatic and have that sucker, and you don't even know. <laughs> so oh, yeah. that's not to not to scare you about your job tomorrow. <laughs> but, but it's already it's, been scared. <laughs> but um, you seem young, uh, fit, and healthy. So I, I don't think you'll have too much of a bad issue but yeah dude thank you so much for helping everyone stay connected your story is crazy um but yeah we'll, we'll we'll keep you in mind and uh send some good prayers and thoughts your way so thanks for uh coming on board awesome. and thank you. lending your your expertise all right so i got mr jose m i'm gonna see if i can bring him on uh since there's all, no audio so i'll try to bring in well you know i see a familiar face in there patrick canane i know he's a collaboration guru and um i'm gonna ask him to start his video here and bring him on board. Patrick's connecting now. Now you're seeing double of me, <laughs> which I guess is just hurting the, the internet right now, all the bandwidth. And I'll try to go through the comments here in a bit as soon as Patrick can get his collaboration stuff up. Come on, Patrick. Dude, your collaboration engineer is not even connecting. Um, so while I'm, I just saw some fuzz flying in the air. While he's connecting, I'll bring in some other people. Actually, I see Jose. Jose, I've got you queued up. I'm going to bring you on right now. Um, how are you doing today? Hi, Chuck. Uh, I'm okay. I'm, and you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. So uh, tell me about yourself and what you do and how you're helping us. Well, uh, well, I'm from Colombia. I'm from Barranquilla. I work for a coal company. So there we, uh, we, having, we are having a, a problem with with the with the job because everyone have have to work at home, so uh, we are dealing with uh, with all the issues about uh, teleworking. Oh man, so, I, I can't imagine. How how um how big is your company? Well, my company is like man, let me see. Like two thousand people, Ooh, something like man. that. And I, I, I imagine not, it's, it's, not, but not of them are connected, uh, are always connected to internet. So maybe five hundred, maybe six. Oh wow! Six. Okay, that's still a lot because I, I imagine it's a lot more than what you're used to. Um, so what, have you? Did you guys have to do anything crazy to get up and running, or did you have enough capacity for um, all those new people working from home? Well, I. I'm working now. I'm I'm right now. I'm working at my home, so I do. I didn't. I don't know support uh, the VPN connection, but I can. Right now, I'm feeling like the the VPN is kind of slow, so the VPN connection right now, I'm feeling like 
kind of slow. So, so you definitely I feel the effects. We have, maybe we have some issues with the with the service providers or the or the QoS in, in our company. Yeah, that's what's what's troubling is like um, your VPN will work really great most of the time because we're not like I mean. I know a lot of companies do stress tests to say, okay, we, we've, we've maxed out our VPN. We know what the limits are. A lot of companies don't have the capacity or the time to do that. So this is it. Like we're getting our, our stress testing done and you, it's hard to tell what the issue is. It could be that our internet providers are being stressed out as well. Um, and I think that's probably gonna end up being the case. I mean, cause we're, we're getting more and more people saying work from home. That's the order. And, um, that's just going to stress out our internet. <laughs> it's going to be, and now we see all these bigger companies like Netflix, Amazon, YouTube. They have a ton of insight into the overall internet traffic on the, around the world. And if they're taking action right now to bring down HD quality to, to SD quality, I think they're just you know getting ready. Um, I think we'll be fine. I think we have a, a lot of capacity, but yeah, in certain areas we could see really just like being horrible. But um, dude, thank you so much for coming on, Jose. I uh, appreciate your insight and. Uh, letting us know how things are in Colombia. Uh, so, such a cool uh, perspective from that. And uh, take care, man. I hope uh, your VPN gets stronger, not worse. <laughs> so take care, brother. Thank you. All right, so I got Mr. Patrick Kinane. Uh, he's been waiting. Uh, how's it going, Patrick? Hey, Chuck. What's going on, boss? Collaboration engineer like yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen you around. I've seen you posting in the collaboration group. Uh, you, kinda, uh, you do a lot in there, so I appreciate that. So, man, yeah, I man. already know a bit about you. I know you are... CCIE collaboration, but uh, tell us more about what you're doing and, and what you're doing day to day to keep us up and working. And this is cool because your collaboration, that's the teleworking, the WebEx piece that we are really relying on right now. So tell us more about what's going on. Yeah, man. So I actually work in Cisco Tech and I work oh. in the collaboration space there. But uh, as my luck would have it, I started working on the cloud collaboration stuff just as all this, you know, began kicking up. So uh, went from uh, Wrapping up to, you know, jumping in with both feet and uh, trying to help learn some of the cloud collab and helping uh, customers with their WebEx meetings and, and WebEx uh, teams and getting things running there. Man, so th that's interesting because I, I remember seeing on the, the Cisco YouTube channel, uh, something come across their videos about the, the CUCM in the cloud or the cloud solution. They've been talking about that for a while. So, but we have, we now have an official solution for and it's Cisco hosted, right? So it's all in the cloud, but it's Cisco hosted. Yeah, so um, I'm still relatively new to the to the cloud side of it, so I can't speak too much about it. But um, you know, lately what I've been doing is, is helping a lot of end users actually, which is which is different for TAC because <laughs> usually we're working with the level three engineers. Um, every once in a while, we'll get the person where hey, everybody on our IT staff either got fired or they quit. So, you know, I'm the, I'm the one who sits closest to the router. Every once in a while, we'll get that person. But, That's but amazing. More recently, more recently, I've been working more with, with some of the end users, which um, was is kind of bringing me back to my days before TAC. And it's pretty cool because, you know, every once in a while, I get to, to talk to somebody who uh, is just happy to get somebody who's there to support them. All right. So it's pretty cool to, to uh, interact with those folks. That's crazy. So, I mean, you're, you're on TAC, and, and of course, you normally get engineers calling in to help with whatever exactly. crazy issue they have. And now you're dealing with yeah. with frontline people, and I even like an IT person sometimes, and you're having to translate your very complex knowledge or something very simple. They can just kind of click or move or you, just getting remote control to do something. Correct. And, you know, one of the good things is that we have WebEx, which allows us to just jump in a meeting with them, grab control of their system, and then walk through and help them set it up themselves. So that, you know, they don't, like like you said, they're not as well-versed in the technology as, as we are. So a lot of times it's just, you know, I don't want to drag this on for you. Let me just hop on your system, take control, figure it out real quick, fix it for you. And, and you know, both of us can move on our way. You can start scheduling your meetings and making use of the service. And, you know, everybody can be happy. That's that's crazy. I didn't even think about that being a thing. and and. Uh, do you have any insight into like what's happening with their IT departments when it's these people who are calling in, not the normal engineers? Like, are they just quitting, or is it like well, that they got laid off? Right. Or no, that's not the case right now at all. Uh, the reason why we're dealing with a lot of the end users right now is because Cisco is is doing the free offering of WebEx, right? Oh. So anybody, uh, mm -hmm. you know, John Doe can just say, I want, I, I'm going to have to start working remotely and dealing remotely with my team and collaborating remotely. 
I'm going to make use of this free WebEx Teams. I'm going to make use of this free WebEx meetings and they'll request it. And sometimes it's their own personal email address, right? So they've never even been in a WebEx possibly. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, but you know, we're all we're all really getting in there and crushing it and, and doing the best we can. And um, so far I've gotten a lot of, even though, even though I'm new to it, right? I kind of was ramping up just as this all happened. I've been getting a lot of, of really good experiences with the customers and getting a lot of really good feedback from the customers with them saying like how pleased they are with the way things are going. Uh, one guy even said to me, he's like, I didn't want to engage the support teams because he just has a negative feeling towards support. He, I guess he has had a lot of negative experiences. Oh yeah. But yeah. after the call, he sent me a really great email saying, I enjoyed working with you and everything else. And of course I told him I enjoyed working with you as well. So, you know, just, Anything that comes up, just reach out to me. I'll open the case for you. You don't even have to open the case. You know, so we understand that everybody is um, really under a lot of stress right now. And so we're trying to alleviate that by offering the free service, but also alleviate it by being more proactive and saying, hey, like for me, my, me, me personally saying, don't even, you know, we've already been interacting. Don't uh -huh. even bother calling into the 800 number. Just reply to my email directly and, and we'll just get back to working. I'll open the case. Okay, that's you know, so we're doing everything we can to uh, really make it simple for the for the customers that are coming in. Wow, I mean, that's I have to say, I, what, of the companies I've been impressed with, I think Cisco has been the most impressive. I, I mean, I um, I was tasked with helping my church figure out how we're going to do our small groups, and and we normally meet at homes in groups like ten to fifteen people, and um, oh look, Zoom said I'm running out of time, and they uh, are giving me more time. <laughs> for free. So Zoom is doing a good job too. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I chose WebEx because they didn't have the time limit meeting, but apparently Zoom doesn't have it either because I just got a notification. That was good timing. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, are you seeing a huge, like, I, I don't know if you had the, this insight into the data, but um, I, I imagine we're seeing a ton of more WebEx traffic. Uh, do you have the insight into how much traffic we can take on? And is there really a limit right now to where we would be at a breaking point or, or WebEx might be in trouble? Yeah, I, I can't speak to that because, again, I'm pretty new. But what I can say is that Chuck Robbins was recently um, doing an interview where he talked about the increased volume. And I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but, um, you know, maybe somebody else can pull it up and put it in the chat. But he he released the amount of um, WebEx meetings that had taken place. And it was it was something insane. I want, I want to say it was in the, the billions in number of minutes. But, uh, you know, I, I can't remember exactly. My but yeah, the uptick, the uptick has been, been a lot. Another thing is, um, you know, uh, everybody talks about the VPN, right? There's right. A, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people connecting over VPN. I think a lot of folks are forgetting about things like MRA, right? So a lot of uh, mm -hmm. customers are also looking to do that. A lot of people looking to use Jabber. Jabber is another really good uh, product that is, that is out there for people to be able to make phone calls with their soft phone because they're not going in the office anymore. You just lost your desk phone. Um, and the newer versions of Jabber have, has the multiple lines available. But uh, I don't want to sound like a spokesperson for Cisco trying to sell things. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I'm just telling you, like, those are the things that uh, I think a lot of people are doing right now, trying to make use of MRA, trying to make use of the free WebEx Teams, WebEx meetings, and trying to make use of Jabber. And another thing, I don't know if you saw this, Chuck, but uh, what is the Unified FX? Unified FX, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, the remote, remote phone control tool? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is the one that was in the CCIE collab, right? In, in the actual lab. I think that was the software. They had that software in the CCIE collab? Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I think it was, um, that's how they, I, I think right around that same time, they became a, a, a partner, a certified partner with Cisco. Mm, right? And so I think that's part of the reason why it was in the lab. I do think, though, that the newer versions of the lab don't have uh, phones. I was looking at the, the hardware and software list, so I think that there's no more even remote phone control. But again, I think we're, maybe I'm taking it off topic here. <laughs> well, real quick, I, I wanted to touch on, cause like, I, I, I remember when uh, MRA, Expressway MRA first came out, it was so cool when I was, I, I had to set it up immediately and all the new features that came out. Uh, but for those at home who don't know what it is, and I'll, I'll see if I can remember, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can remember real quick. It's not VPN, but it's using TLS and secure connections to connect remotely without setting up a VPN. So you just essentially send a phone home with somebody, it connects, makes a secure connection and bam, no matter where you are. Yeah, so a lot of people call it VPN-less, like, like a VPN-less VPN, 
right? Because on the phone, there's actually like a trust store that is a list of public certificate authorities that the phone will trust. Mm -hmm. right? And there's a document out there online, people can find it. Um, so what you then do is you get your Expressway E signed by one of those certificate authorities and the phone already naturally trusts it because it's in the phone's trust store. So the phone, you know, connects over and you can do provisioning from, uh, you know, somebody at home registering to your on-prem CCM. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool feature. Um, and uh, man, now more than ever, it's probably going to be essential for people. Uh, and I, I'm curious if like Expressway, all the Expressway endpoints and some even like the virtualized versions can handle all this new traffic, but we'll see. <laughs> but uh, Patrick, yeah, um, thanks for coming on, dude. Um, you are a man full of knowledge. I might have to bring you back on, but I'm going to bring yeah, some other great. folks on here in a bit. Um, but thanks for your perspective and I'll talk to you yeah, soon, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. One last thing. Hey, do you mind making me an admin of your uh, Facebook routing and switching CCNA group? Let me jot that down. Yeah, cool, man. All right, I'll do it. All right, talk Thanks, to you later. Enjoy. All right, so I uh, have someone waiting here, Mr. Caleb. Caleb, I'm gonna unmute you here now, and uh, you are hey. live, I think. Hey, yeah, my name's Caleb. Hey, nice Caleb, how's it going, man? All right. So uh, tell me about yourself, what you do, and how you're helping. Yeah, so I'm a, a service desk technician or help desk technician um, for like a medium-sized company. We mm -hmm. run about like 450 employees. Um, I, I kind of wear a lot of hats because we're a, a small department. We only have just me and my boss and that's about it. So he runs kind of all. That's like, a fun I mean, place to be in though. I bet yeah. it, it's stressful, but fun. Yeah. Get a lot of learn a lot of stuff, especially right now. <laughs> um, so he's kind of handling all the network stuff and we've been uh, lucky enough to have like a well-established VPN. What our company does is uh, landslide prevention, uh, which is, like an ongoing issue especially with like this last summer we had a lot of rain and that causes uh, a lot of emergencies that we have to repair so our company is very mobile um, and we're able to go out um, and we already had like a well-established vpn um, we use citrix like as a, a vdi that people already can log into and they can do their work from there oh yeah perfect uh, okay so on that on that side everything's going going a-okay so that's something that we were pre prepared for um kind of like a downside and it, it sounds kind of like unimportant right now, but like a downside that we, we were running into was like the availability of like mobile devices. Um, we have everything set up on our MDM, but we just can't get the phones because um, uh, wow. you know everything in Asia has kind of stopped trade with the US. We're not able to get phones out to our crews. We're having trouble with, uh, you know, even getting like sat phones, a lot of, lot of equipment, iPads, you know, things that we need to get to these people who work in the middle of some mountain where there's no where there's no uh, cell coverage, we're we're struggling there. So that's crazy. So you, you I mean you're deploying sat phones and stuff like that's insane. Um, I didn't yeah. even think about like working from home. I just think, I, in my mind, my limited understanding, like I just think people working from home and in, in the suburbs, eh, they got cable, DSL, whatever. But like in the yeah. mountains, trying to work remotely, like <laughs> just give up. Yeah. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah. Most of our workforce is able to get by with uh, just lo lo with like a hotel Wi-Fi and logging into their VPN through there or or through through Citrix there. But uh, yeah, we've we've definitely had some unique challenges, most mostly on the mobility side. But uh, you yeah. know, interesting. So um, sure. yeah, do you guys see yourselves uh, making any major changes after all this is said and done to address any issues, or were you guys pretty much ready? Just the the unforeseeable yeah. issues of not being able to source your your products that you needed. Um, so we, for the most part, we were ready. Uh, we ran into a, a bit of uh, a few issues, like when we first rolled out our VPN last year, um, but we were able to get those fixed uh, fairly quickly. We we always had to have some something that people could log into, and and work from uh, because because we are like 100% remote. 90% oh. of our workforce, even the, the people who are you know, our, our engineers, our accountants, like our accountants have like a small office, but like 90% of, of our uh, of our workforce is in the field. So we, we were you know, re com completely ready for that. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. And I think uh, a lot more people are going to start adopting that attitude now because yeah. uh, my goodness, uh, you don't anticipate something like this happening, but um yeah. Here we are. <laughs> so, dude, uh, thank you so much for coming on and, uh, and lending your, your expertise and your perspective. It's been awesome. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you. stick around. All right. I'll, I'll go ahead and mute Caleb here. I've got uh, Steven on here. Um, Steven, I'm going to bring you on now. Unmuting now. Maybe now. 
No. Oh, there we go. Hello? Hello? Hey, Stevie. Uh, Hi. <laughs> there we go. I think it's working now. Hi, How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Ah, doing fantastic. So tell me, tell me uh, who you are and what you do. So I am a freelance network engineer. Um, I help small and medium sized businesses. Uh, kind of slow right now, but uh, just oh yeah, trying to yeah, it's we got hit bad. In fact, I'm trying to actually look for work right now. It's just been ridiculous because I don't know if I'm going to last or all this. It's, it's been kind of slow, but I do some nonprofit work too, and I actually been helping out people who actually on my social media last week, guys, I did kind of like a bolo to everybody saying, you know, if you need any help with remote work, any issues, I'm here for free. You know. So that I have a lot of amazing. I have a lot of friends that you know need support. And, um, I'm kind of one of the only people in my area that kind of knows it. But um, in Michigan, we're bitten pretty hit pretty hard. How's things down in Texas? You know, it's um, it's not too bad actually. We, we don't have yeah. too many cases showing up. Uh, but we we like in my county right now, we've got the stay at home order. So it, it's yeah, the same serious order that you know is happening uh, further up north. But yeah, it's it's been yeah. okay. Uh, but I mean, you, you hit a good point though. I, I didn't think about that. Um, during times like this, of course, some of the things that go through our head is how can we help? Uh, we're being told to stay at home, which I get. So how can we help remotely? Uh, I don't even really think about like offering our skills to people for free. Cause I mean, we take, we take it for granted cause we do it every day. It seems like right. almost sometimes common sense to us, but it's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's things that people just totally need help with. So uh, that's so cool. You've been volunteering. And um, I, I didn't even think about like freelance network engineers. Cause I imagine it was a great situation up until now. Right. Yeah. It's, it's great. My work has been piecework here and there, as you've probably experienced in the past, like for a start, I'm kind of new. I'm like only, I got into the networking side about a year ago doing ubiquity stuff. My, oh, my yeah. specialty is ubiquity. I don't really do too much Cisco. I did Meraki stuff. I didn't really like it, but you know, it's, that's about my only Cisco um, experience. But um, I'm mostly you know, ubiquity side, um, stuff like that. But um, I'm just now getting into systems. I'm trying to do cloud. I'm like having a really, I'm like kind of like the other guy that was on. I'm like trying to cram. It's my, I'm trying to get my Linux. I'm trying to get my <laughs> Azure. It's like, and actually it's funny. You've actually inspired me a lot because um, I, I started watching, I think I found your channel five months ago or six months ago, and i just been nonstop binging yourself. Like, oh, you've man, got some I good stuff. That. I love your stuff. You really <laughs> do want to do a great job. But um, Thank you. I just, for guys like me who are just brand, brand new, I feel like I'm just getting my, to give you an idea, I'm just getting my head wrapped around, you know, SMB networks and doing the efficient subnetting and, and doing trying to do all that remotely is crazy. You know, oh crazy. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, man, you're on the right path ahead. though. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you're it's, I know it's frustrating right now. Cause like right now is the time you want to just find a great company to work for, or, you know, right. spread out your skills. And it's, it's frustrating because you feel hamstringed. Um, so yeah, if anybody's watching and you got a job, uh, that he could do, St- uh, Steven's looking for something. He's got uh, ubiquity experience, Meraki experience, and he's willing to learn. So anybody looking yeah. out, he's ready. And um, cloud, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're in the right direction with cloud. Oh my goodness, Azure, are you looking at Azure or AWS? Yeah, it's, I, I guess Azure seems to be like the up and coming because everybody's on AWS right now. And since Azure got that um, that DOD contract. Oh, yeah, that, the Jedi contract, yeah. That, right. <laughs> Love that they, name, uh, like who came up with that? They should right. get a medal, yeah. Right. So it seems like they have more, from my research, they have more certificates as far as like being NIST compliant being HIPAA compliant and all that other stuff. So it seems like that's where the mecca of corporations are going to go just for the security certification factor. At least in my mind, that's what it seems like. Oh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think um, even like small businesses, um, they're going to yeah. be a, a Microsoft shop. Um, and if they're going to make a move to the cloud, they're going to go Azure. It just makes more sense for them. Uh, well, Stephen, dude, your story is uh, incredible. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate your insight and your expertise. And uh, hey, uh, if you need any help, just reach out to me. I'm on Discord every once in a while. So um, sure. just let me know, man. All right, take care. For sure. Thank you. All right, I want to do one more call. I got Mr. Victor La Rosa. Um, Come on, Victor. Let me see if I can hear you. Hear your uh, voice. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me, Victor? Hi, Chuck. How are you? Oh, doing great, man. How you doing? Oh, I think we lost you for a sec. Oh, and can't hear you. Thanks for. I, are you listening? Oh, there we go. I got you. Hi, are you listening to me? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity. 
Absolutely. That's so, uh, good. So tell me, uh, tell me more about yourself and uh, and what you're doing. Okay, I am the network administrator of the biggest airline company in Venezuela, uh, and for as you know, all the airline companies around the globe are having some trouble because all the restrictions that all the countries are making for for the airlines, because all the uh, airlines, all the the, the travelings are um, and in ground by don't spread this this virus or all around the globe and this affects us all directly because uh, this company have around 2000 employees between wow. all the administrative administrative uh, personnel and all the directly uh, online uh, com uh, online employees uh, i don't know all the uh, one of the biggest problem for all or for all of us is connecting all the uh, call center agents uh, because our our call center is based on our hangar in the in the airport so this oh, is a wow. secure place and because of all the restrictions that they have uh, they can uh, go exit from their home we have to establish all these VPNs for them to work in this house. And it's a little, uh, in, uh, was a little bit tricky because we use uh, a Cisco UCM's platform and mm. we have to uh, connect into the VPN to establish all your protocol between our firewalls, all the permission, uh, install all the application in, in his personal laptop. Uh, First, we have to send one of these uh, of IT uh, uh, IT technical uh, for his house and and check out this personal computer that they don't have any virus and create new users for only connect this application of Cisco in one in one user in particular in this personal computer. So we can establish a secure connection to them, and they can uh, attend all the passengers that uh, have some, I don't know, travel already scheduled, or some of them uh, are being left in another country, oh like my Colombia, Peru, uh, US, in, I don't know, in, Cost in Dominican Republic. Some of, of, of our, our passengers have left in this country. This week, the airline uh, has to make some uh, humanitarian travel, uh, asking permission for the local government so they can come back to, 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 to home. So it's for our IT department has been a, a big job to My get the company up and running. I can't imagine. So, virus. Um, so uh, when you're when you're helping these people go work from home in the call center, are they connecting using Cisco Jabber, or are you sending like a, a hard phone uh, with them? Home? No, they. No, they're using uh, software, an uh, old version of uh, Cisco IP communicator. Oh, oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, the old Cisco IP communicator. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> correct. We don't have to still. We don't upgrade the this the Cisco communicator platform yet. So. That are using the the IP communicator, so this is a little bit harder work because the, if the if we have the the new the new platform, we can use a, any any of the I don't know a smartphone or any other platform to the uh, be a little bit easy to connect to our clients. But oh yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but yeah, because like platform. Jabber can only be put on the on the the soft phones and, and yes. all those other devices. Yeah, IP yes. communicators, I think only. I th do they have a Mac client? I think it's only Windows, right? Uh, yes, this only work with Windows. Oh my goodness! Even we have uh, we have a mix of uh, two two platform. We have we already have uh, the uh, we use this the soft phone with the IP communicator, and we have uh, upgraded to the new version of the the. Cisco administrator that the, the only work with uh, Windows 10. So it's a little bit tricky installing <laughs> oh all goodness. these platforms. It's special for the, for the supervisor that they have to monitoring all these agents remotely and look all the statistics 
it's a little bit a little bit hard to do. I can't. I, am I can't imagine. Basically, happy with my team that can pull this all over. All my my crew, my my three three network specialists have have been doing an excellent work doing pulling this all. I mean, you're in an industry that's obviously being hit hard, and uh, you and your team. I can't imagine what you guys are going through. So thank you for. Um, doing all the work because I, I know you gotta be working crazy hours I know it's gotta be stressful and you're hitting new challenges that you normally don't have to deal with so thank you and uh, thank you for coming on and giving your perspective that's such an interesting perspective and a cool story so uh, Victor stay strong and hopefully we'll all see the other side of this and be uh, have great networks from now on <laughs> so thanks man take care thank you thank you Chuck thank you. all right so I got uh, Joe Solis one more um, I'm, I'm muting you now Joe can you hear me yeah I can hear you all right, you're a bit faint. I'm gonna try and pull up the volume on my side, but if you can turn it up on your side a bit. How about this? Is this a little bit better? Sounds good, man. So, uh, how you doing tonight or today? I'm not sure what time it is for you. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, it's doing all right. Set up so many VPNs today. Uh, a lot of a lot of our clients. I work for an MSP out here in California. Uh, a lot of our clients all decided to just go remote. Just in one week, everybody decided we're gone. <laughs> oh my gosh. VPNs left and right, phone calls off the hook. Luckily for us, you know we have a few uh, few of the clients using uh, uh, different uh, uh, phone solutions. Uh, right now, I'm actually working. I'm working on on a, a, a ticket. Um, <laughs> Someone's like, "Why isn't my ticket going through?" And this is why. <laughs> well, I'm pretty good at uh, at doing this whole multitasking. Uh, um, we also have customers that are using uh, Cisco. We have customers using 3CX and all various th other uh, uh, environments and whatnot. And uh, so the transition has actually been pretty easy. The uh, our, our engineers and everything just get the VPN uh, all set up uh, with each individual client setting up. Uh, uh, EMS, I mm. believe it's called EMS uh, uh, connectivity with uh, some of the, uh, I guess, uh, Fortinet, Fortigate, uh, firewalls and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then with some of our Cisco uh, uh, clients, they, they came up with some of the solutions over there to get everything all connected. And uh, right now, surprisingly, I mean, I might jinx myself, but <laughs> so far I've not gotten a call and either that's a bad thing or that's a good thing. Yeah. Either <laughs> everything's melting down or you did a good job. Yes. <laughs> um, so I, I, I can imagine like just ticket on ticket on ticket, given that all your clients just decide to work from home. Um, have you had any like urgent tickets, like people asking, hey, we need to upgrade our, our, our VPN infrastructure or do you have to deal with that at all? Oh, we, 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 you know, you know how, how IT works, you know, how help desk works. You, you're hearing the yelling. Oh yeah. 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 You get yelled at a ton. <laughs> so, you know, in the very beginning, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of that since then, uh, let's say within a day or two, we managed to get all that wrangled down and we managed to get a, a process going, sent out, uh, uh, uh emails with, with screenshot, um, uh, click here, click there, download here, <laughs> go to this website. Uh, it's amazing how fast you get documentation going, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess the harder ones were actually the Mac users. There were very few of them. And mm. so the, the remote environment we use is not super friendly with Mac. So, uh, but we managed to get those uh, all knocked out. Um, and even during the time of, of working on all of this, the entire, it's a live development uh, situation. We're, we're, we're developing the situation or the, the solution live. And the customers luckily, uh, they're, they're nice uh, on our end, we're, we're lucky uh, that they're nice and they understand that we're working on the fly. Well, it's good they understand it because oftentimes they don't understand. It's more like my issue is the most important thing in the world, and I think you're an idiot because you can't figure it out right now. At least now, 
people have a general understanding that things are kind of rough. So I guess that's good. But uh, I imagine you may encounter every once in a while just someone who's like, I'm still important. I don't care if there's 15 viruses out there. I need my stuff working right now. Yeah. Uh, we had we had a couple of those. Luckily, we were able to knock those out fast. <laughs> <laughs> so people people came in angry and they left happy. So. Well, good deal, man. Well, uh, thank you so much for your perspective. Um, thank you for what you're doing. I know working for an MSP in this time has got to be difficult because a lot of these companies who are medium sized or small, they're not ready for this kind of stuff at all. And they don't have the staff to help out. So you guys are just being inundated. So thank you for what you're doing and um, keep trucking, man. We'll see the other side of this real soon. Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. man. Take care. All right, guys. That's all for the meetings right now going to switch to just me now. Um, thank you to everyone who just kind of chilled out and talked. That was so cool. And if you're still around, um, thank you for hanging out. I'll go through a few of the questions right now. Um, if you want me to do more of that, let me know. Uh, we'll pick a topic and bring some more people on. That was fun. I think it went pretty well. Uh, I didn't test a lot of that beforehand, so uh, <laughs> that was kind of flying blind. Um, I'll look through, the, through, the, through a few of the super chats here first. Uh, Matt Mack, thank you for the super chat. Love what you do. Look forward to your videos and live sessions as it's great motivation for growth. Um, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, it actually is extremely motivating for me because it keeps me focused. Like, I got to go and talk about this stuff. Hey, that's actually what I should be doing. I should be studying. I should be, so it helps me. So I, I'm glad I can help you guys out, um, especially during this time because it's, it's easy to, I don't know about you guys, but I find myself, um, even though I'm not being directly affected, like no one in my family has a coronavirus that I know of. Um, I haven't lost my job, so I, that's that's awesome. So I know a lot of people are going through a rough time where they've lost their job, and that sucks. And you know we're we're, we're praying for you, and in any way I can help, um, or any of us can help, let us know. But I'm like for myself, I'm not being like directly affected. I'm just watching the news, kind of being aware of what's going on, and I just feel weird. You know, is anyone else like feeling like that? I just feel like weird. Um, like like the world's about to end, but it hasn't happened to you yet. Um, I know w most likely we're all going to be okay. And we're going to see the, the other side of it. But it's just, it's hard to stay focused on the day-to-day -day of like studying, getting work done. I'm right there with you. I, it's, it's weird. So uh, doing things like this to like, hey, we're all in this together. Hey, we're, we're all having to get up and, and, and work. And we're all having to motivate ourselves. Um, we're all in this. So doing this is really helpful. Um, thank you, Pranav Darwai. I think I think I said that right. Thank you for the super chat. If you have any particular question, I'll see if I can find it. Um, otherwise, I'll just scoot on down. Uh, but thank you for the super chat. Um, Saliha, good to see you again. Thank you for the super chat. So just to let you know, my solution and services company is doing good now. Uh, she needs support. What is the best search she can do during this time? Um, and how does she give remote service? Uh, so it's good to hear companies doing great, especially during this time, um, giving remote service. That's kind of hard right now, unless you already have a solution set up with that company or w uh, with whatever your client is. Um, I know there's a ton of solutions out there. I, I don't know what the big ones are right now. I, I worked for MS an MSP for a very short amount of time, but um, there's a, I mean, I think Google has some good solutions. Uh, I know SolarWinds has their help desk software. That's really great. Uh, what's that remote? It's Dameware, the, the remote support. So gosh, I, that may be phased out. I'm like, I feel like old now. Uh, but as far as the certification right now, which one do you want to do? Um, I'm actually on the fence about that myself because um, I was looking at doing my, my CCMP Encore exam here pretty soon, uh, but we can't test on that for 30 days. because so, and, and it could be longer, hopefully not, but it could be longer. So what are we gonna do? Um, but other testing providers have decided to uh, make widely available remote testing. Um, some of those are being, uh, uh, or not CompTIA just yet, but they, they have said they're gonna do it. So we haven't seen that just yet, but they said they'll do it, so that, that's a start. Um, Microsoft is doing it for a lot of the certifications. I'm not sure all, but I know for sure the main ones like the AZ-900, the AZ-103 slash 104, and then Amazon announced today that they're doing all of their certifications online proctoring, which has got me tempted right now. Um, I'm thinking I might wanna go for my uh, AWS Solutions Architect Associate, right? Is that, I always forget the, <laughs> The, the associate one. I think I might want that one. Um, and I think I might knock that out here in the next 30 days just for fun because I can do it at home. Uh, so th those are the ones I would look at right now. Um, 
as far as after, as far as after all this crazy is over and, and remote proctoring is not an issue for you, I would say any cloud certification um, for your for your business being a small business. I think more and more companies are going to look at the cloud. More and more companies, and this is especially important for a services company like yours. More and more companies are going to look at transitioning their uh, on-site equipment to the cloud. So gaining that skill um, is going to be huge, especially when people realize that they can't put all their infrastructure in one place. Uh, they have to have some kind of remote disaster recovery situation all the time. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I'm looking at Ad, or Amazon right now, um, kind of thinking about it. Let me know what you guys think. I think I might do it. I tend to overcommit, but hey, I'm, I'm getting that itch to get another, another certification here. Um, let me see, going through here. Thank you, Stephen Foote, for joining the 10X Engineer Club. Uh, thank you for joining. If you don't know what my membership is, go check it out. There's a link somewhere around here. And... Um, <laughs> Collab Crush says, Chuck, why are you using Zoom instead of Cisco's collaboration solution? Shame on you. <laughs> um, I don't know why I did, actually. I, I was going to use WebEx, but uh, I think I see more people using Zoom, so I just kind of zoomed in and used it. I should have used WebEx now that I'm thinking about it. Um, ID10T, thank you for error. Thank you for the super chat. Some TP money for me. Should buy you a couple squares. Now <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Thankfully, I had enough toilet paper before all this stuff freaked out, but yeah, uh, every store around me can't find toilet paper. I don't know what everyone's problem is. There's not a shortage. Uh, the, the symptoms don't cause massive issues in the bathroom. Um, so I'll tell you two things I'm not worried about, um, or two things I've done to make me not worried about TP. Um, I'm a huge advocate for bidets. Uh, if you don't have a bidet, you should get one. <laughs> toilet paper free. They're amazing. And people laugh at me, but hey, you know what? They're not laughing now. Um, yeah, William Fing, the, the tech guy to say WebEx is free right now. Yeah, they're, um, I think they're like, not their like pro pro version, but their like semi pro version is free right now. So don't, what you normally have to pay for is free. And it's fantastic. Um, I re actually recommended it for my, uh, my church small group to be uh, using. Uh, Dynex, he got an offer from a uh, big hospital to work as a PAX administrator. Huge thanks for inspiring. Uh, that's, that's amazing. So congrats on that job. That's huge. Uh, someone asked AWS versus Azure to get jobs and why. Um, this is going to be totally dependent on where you are. This, this is the thing I always say. I feel like a broken record, but it, it is totally dependent on where you are. Pull up Indeed, pull up, pull up LinkedIn Jobs, pull up Dice, and search AWS and see how many results come up. See what they're looking for. Do the same with Azure. If you see a high concentration of AWS jobs, no brainer, go for AWS, vice versa for Azure. Or maybe not even where you are, maybe where you want to be. I've often done that. I've dreamed about living in Seattle. I wanted to live in uh, Florida, uh, New York. So I would have all these job searches like up. I just wanted to go somewhere. Um, so yeah, to do that. But it's all dependent on where you are. Um, really at this point, uh, if you're living in a metropolitan area, like if you're in Dallas, uh, where I live. If you go AWS, if you go Azure, doesn't matter. You're going to do great <laughs> because there are so many companies that are using both. Um, actually, my brother, who is a, uh, he's now officially a cloud engineer. So proud of him for doing that. His company uses both. They've acquired, like they, they use uh, AWS mainly, but they've acquired companies that use Azure. So he has to pick up both skills. So you can't, you can't lose going either way. Um, I had another point I was going to bring up uh, earlier, but I totally forgot. Something about how the internet usage is going crazy, and uh, I'm going to do a video soon about jobs. I'm curious how jobs will be affected during this time, because um, I know many people are looking for a job. And like your job search, how how has it been frustrating now that you, people you can't go in for an interview? Are the remote interviews fine? Can you can you do remote onboarding once you are hired? That becomes a frustrating situation. Someone asked, Network Plus or Cloud? Uh, why not both? If uh, if you're looking for a good, I'm starting to lose my voice. I've been talking too much. <coughs> Don't have it yet. Uh, Network Plus, if you're looking for a good overview introduction to networking and cloud and security, uh, if you kind of know where you want to go, uh, go straight for a cloud cert. So if you go to the AZ900 or the AWS Cloud Practitioner, those are both fantastic. You'll get a great overview and like the, the, you'll learn some some uh, subnetting within those courses. You'll learn um, basics of system and SQL administration. Not like 
administering, like being able to spin up servers and stuff and knowing how to manage the servers, but you'll, you'll learn how to do it in the cloud and it's, it's awesome. So I, that, that's definitely a way to, a way to go. Um, Oh yeah, and I was gonna. I mentioned earlier, and in case you guys didn't hear, YouTube is uh, you call it down sampling or just throttling everyone back to 480p. So if you're watching this video now in a couple days, I'm probably in 480p. So my my fancy camera I bought doesn't even matter. My high internet speed doesn't matter. Uh, so we're seeing some changes. We are. And I think now, um, now more than ever, we need to focus and pay attention to the signs of what's going on as far as like choosing your next skill set. So look at like look around. Like people are looking at security. People are having to securely uh, work from home. You know what's going to happen? And we haven't seen it because I, I, I think we're, we're seeing a lot of goodwill in people, but all these people working from home is going to produce a ton of security holes, a ton of security risks. It's easy. Well, it's not easy, but it's, it's a lot easier to protect your company when people are coming into your building, connecting to your land, and you're having like a self-contained environment. But when you got a bunch of people connecting at their homes with maybe their personal computers, a lot of uh, MDM stuff, you know, bring your own device, BYOD, you, we're seeing a lot of um, holes being punched into our security solutions. So it's kind of scary. So I think learning security, which can entail, you know, learning, if you go the Cisco route, you'll learn about VPNs and firewalls and uh, malware and all that. So if you go that way, you'll definitely learn to get a good enterprise perspective of how to get everything going. And then just, man, learning how to hack, learning how to uh, white hat hack and that offensive security, red teaming stuff to help companies test their, their protections and their vulnerabilities and make sure there's no holes. That's going to be huge. Um, and of course, really anything in IT right now, my goodness, we're, we're, this industry is going to stink and boom because pe people are looking at us now. We are, um, we're not as important as the, the frontline people, uh, you know, that are in the emergency rooms, the doctors, the nurses, obviously them putting themselves in the line to care for sick patients is, is totally like amazing. That's, that's hero worthy, but not, well, we're pretty far behind, but we are on the list of helping people. We're on the list of making sure uh, the comp our, our country doesn't go into complete economic uh, collapse and, and the, the world at large. It, it's going to get bad if we don't you know, start going back to work. But for now, we're keeping things running. And people are looking at us, and they realize how important our jobs are. And um, I think we're going to see IT staffs grow a bit because they, they realize how many people they might need. Um, I think it's, it's going to be good for us. Uh, William Murray. Uh, Juniper, thank you for the super chat. Juniper Genius is free. Juniper Learning Platform. If you go through their associate level courses and pass their assessment test, you receive a voucher and you can test from home. Juniper. Hmm. You know, I've been anti-Juniper. Not not for any particular reason, just because I'm a huge Cisco fanboy and that's the only reason. Uh, but, huh. So you're essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, essentially saying if you go to their free website, get their free learning, pass their free exam, you get a free voucher to then take a real certification exam. So free, 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 free. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, Patrick Kinane, back at it again. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, this is what was said by Cisco CEO about WebEx meetings, Chuck Robbins. In the first 11 business days of March, we've had 5.5 billion meeting minutes. That's crazy. So yeah, a ton of people meeting, a ton of video. Can, can you just imagine like every... Imagine translating every face-to-face -face meeting that happens at, a, at, a, at a, a corporate office, translating that to a remote connection, video connection, teleconferencing, translating all that to everyone being at home using internet bandwidth. Can you just imagine the toll it's taking on our ISPs? I can't imagine. I know I was talking with a buddy of mine. You might know him. Uh, I won't mention his name, but he was having trouble live streaming. Uh, just, my goodness, could, his live stream kept dropping. and. I'm assuming in his area, just such a large concentration of people, all streaming, all watching Netflix and such. It's it's killing our pipes. So I know a lot of places are going to have no issues because we we have such an abundance of internet right now. But who knows, man? Who knows? Um, Patrick, once again, uh, as you can see, it is a service that can scale and it can do so quickly. Yeah. So Patrick works for Cisco Tech. Um, that's their uh, what is it? The technical assistant. 
something something customer <laughs> center is that what it is technical assistance center um i love cisco tech been calling into them for years you guys are amazing uh but he works for the webex team now and uh that's one of the top tier it's i think it's zoom and webex right now the top teleconferencing solutions right now well, anyways guys i'm starting to fade uh thank you so much for joining me tonight uh it's so it's so great even though I mean, we're all in the same boat now. We're kind of tele tele meeting right now. It's it's good to hang out. It's good to talk with people. It's good to have a face to face because it can be isolating. It can feel weird. Like I was speaking about earlier, it feels weird. It feels weird. Uh, with all this happening, we're all at home. It feels very apocalyptic. When it's probably gonna blow over soon, but we're we're taking drastic crazy measures to make sure we don't have something really crazy and drastic happen. Totally get that. Uh, but we'll get through it. And it's good to see your faces and good to talk to you. And um, I'll be going live in about two days to do something really fun. So I hope to see you guys very soon. And um, that's about it. I will catch you guys later.